Last year you told a joke at a stand-up gig just moments after Prince Philip died. Lewis, would you ever apologise for a joke? Guys, welcome back to the channel. You better subscribe and like this video now because I have officially made it. If you thought I made it because of the size of my channel or uh, multiple podcasts or all the tickets that I sell, you'd be wrong. I've officially made it because I finally, after 10 years in comedy, made an unpaid appearance on a government-funded broadcast mainstream network channel called SBS. I've made it, baby. Earlier this week, I was on a program called SBS Insight. It's a program where they talk about uh, little issues like uh, domestic violence, depression, PTSD from war, refugee crises, and occasionally they talk about things that really matter as well, like what comedians think about jokes. If you're outside of Australia, SBS is our government-funded broadcaster, and they have a giant budget of around $10 per week to make TV. And their mission statement is uh, to, to promote how multicultural Australia is, to promote different viewpoints and cultures and nationalities and really just show off the, the, the diversity uh, that we have in our beautiful country. So of course they got the straightest, whitest male on that program, me, to talk about comedy. And they had me on the show to discuss my many controversial jokes, namely the Prince Philip joke and the reaction to it and how I was uh, cancelled by the mainstream media despite telling them to cancel me and manipulating them from the start. Uh, we was there really just to talk about what jokes are too far, what, what can you joke about, what can't you joke about, and should you ever apologize for a joke? And because it was SBS, this episode was very diverse. We had Alice Frazier, a woman, really good comic. Uh, we had Akmal Sali, one of my favorites, an Egyptian guy. We had Jordan Raskopoulos, a trans woman. And we had up the back, I think it was the Queen of England. Seemed a bit disrespectful to have her there, considering I was going to play the Prince Philip bit, but whatever. And of course, we had me, representing the edgy, straight white male comedians out there who will cross the line and say anything they dare and never apologize for a joke. I was also representing Julius Caesar, if you have a look at my haircut. Now, if you've been a fan of my comedy for a while, you will know I have extensive experience with the mainstream media and none of it is good. I have never had a good experience with the media. The only times I've had fun being on a TV show or being on the radio or being in the news is when I've orchestrated it and I've tricked them into putting me on the news and then they've cracked at finding out my real name. A comedian and serial pest. This is the first time that I've ever been invited on a show as Lewis Spears. I couldn't believe it. They actually wanted me. For years I've had to dress up as someone else, change my name, make up a bullshit story. This was the first time someone actually wanted Lewis Spears as himself to talk about what he actually does on their show. So I was on high alert. I was just waiting for the gotcha moment. I was waiting for them to pull out like, I don't know, the actual Queen of England crying on TV to call me a bad guy. I was waiting to just get bent over and as the program went on, it just didn't happen. And what followed was an incredibly interesting and engaging conversation about jokes. Should you apologize for them? What's too far? Is there a line? Can you joke about something or can you not? What are the rules? And uh, after the taping, I was like, well, that was great, but surely they're going to edit me poorly. And again, they didn't. However, they did cut my very funny very hilarious blackface joke and I'm still upset about it and we'll get into that later in the video. But before we get into that joke, it's time to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped.com. Do you have a shockingly, disgustingly hairy taint? You need to fix that with Manscaped.com's Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game. It even works for ladies. I mean, either, either use it for yourself, ladies, or buy one for your partner. Don't buy it for your dad, that's strange, but I will encourage you buying it for your partner. Maybe a brother, depends on your relationship. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the best ball bag trimmer in the game. It's something that I use all the time and let's be honest by my energy you can tell plus manscaped have recently released their full body care line they've got uh hydrating body spray pretty good uh they've got uh shampoo and conditioner two in one save you a bit of time who has time for two products not me uh and they also have body wash this smells really nice and finally look i actually really like this stuff they've got a little bit of chapstick all right now who wants to give me a kiss everyone. That's manscaped.com. Use code BIGSPEARS. Check the link in the description and top comment. Thank you very much. Support the brands and support the show. That's how we keep it all spinning. Now, before getting into the blackface joke that they maliciously cut and I'll never forgive them for it, let's talk about a man who actually loved a bit of blackface himself. Prince Philip and my joke about him. Now, this is the reason why SBS Insight got me on the program. It was to talk about the reaction I got from telling a joke about Prince Philip the minute I found out he died. <laughs> 
Last year, you told a joke at a stand-up gig just moments after Prince Philip died. Let's have a look. It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen has announced the death of her beloved husband, the Royal Highness. Can I just say, I'm a bit overdue. What was the response to that on the night? Uh, on the night, as you can see, it demolished. Like, it was one of the best sets I've ever done in my life. See, there really is nothing better than going on national television and telling everybody that you fucking demolished and you're a great comedian, is there? Speaking of, you should come and see me live. LouSpears.com. Come get your tickets. Uh, this comedy festival, I'll be joking about the Queen. Two for two. It's something that I feel real privileged that I managed <coughs> to catch on film that could never be replicated, because those were pre-written jokes that I was doing about Prince Philip at the comedy festival for ten nights in a row. So, if anything, I should maybe apologise to the royal family, because I think I killed him. <laughs> After that, though, we got into a discussion about what jokes are too far. Is there a line that you can't cross? What happens when you offend people or offend people from a specific group? And are there certain jokes that certain types of people can't do? And that's when they asked me if I would ever apologise for a joke. Lewis, would you ever apologise for a joke? Never. No, I wouldn't. If I know that my intention is to make people laugh, which is what my intention always is if I'm on a stage, mm. I wouldn't apologise to a joke, especially not one that I know is funny from doing it so many times in so many different settings. Lewis, is humour important? I think it's one of the most important things that humans have. We're the only species in the world that I know of that can laugh. So I think that humour is a really important thing uh, for us, uh, our mental health, our ability to form relationships, our ability to relieve tension, our ability to get over terrible things in our lives. Humour has helped me with the grieving process. Humour has helped me with loved ones going through cancer. I think that it's a really important tool that we have for a reason. And I think that that's why I feel so uh, passionate about protecting people's ability to, to try and elicit laughter. What happens if we are too afraid to make jokes? Well, nothing good. Um, I think that it, it makes the world boring and I think that it, it makes performers scared to take risks, which makes art less good. I think that comedians' jobs and artists' jobs is to walk the line and sometimes look at it and kick it out and go, no, actually, I reckon I can bring a few of these dark, hurtful things into the light and make us talk about it or make us feel more comfortable with it. Overall, I'm incredibly happy with how I'm being presented here. I think I'm handling myself pretty well. I've never done a serious program like this before. I think I'm coming across well. So that's when I decide to start dropping in as many jokes as I can. <laughs> well, yeah, I've never had so many death threats from so many people so close to death themselves. <laughs> Man, I've been doing comedy for a while now and I have bombed a few times in my career, but never in my life have I bombed that hard. Dropping in what I thought was a pretty good joke in the middle of an intellectual discussion about the philosophy of humour and, and the ethics of comedy and just dropping in like a silly joke like that to just dead silence on national TV, that is a bomb. But even worse than bombing on national television when you're there as an expert in telling jokes is them cutting the only joke that I really wanted to be in there. And look, to be honest, I can complain about it, but I know exactly why they cut this one. And for their sake, it was probably a good idea. Now, obviously, because they cut the joke from the broadcast, I can't show you what it is. But what I can do with the power of green screen is completely reenact it word for word. Just a few generations ago, we were all going to minstrel shows and enjoying blackface, right? The line, that was acceptable, that was encouraged. But then us as a society and performers all came together and were like, you know what, actually, let's pull that back. But now blackface is something that only a very small minority of ABC executives would fund. Thank you very much, I'm very funny. That's what happens when you cut my joke, all right? I put it back in in post. Now, as you know, I've never been on a panel show like this before, and one thing that I'm quite annoyed about is nobody told me that you're not really supposed to turn around when someone else is talking. If you watch this thing, 100% of the B-roll shots they use of me is every time I fucking turn around to look at the person talking behind me. No one else did that. I was in the front row. I didn't know that you were just supposed to look to the front 
I thought it was rude. I kept turning around and looking at people. I looked like a fucking idiot. Also, I think it was quite unprofessional of me to, when someone was telling their story about getting in trouble and getting canceled, I thought it was just funny, so I just laughed the entire time. Quite disrespectful, and they did cut out the part where she told me I was being a smartass. That's a shame, but, you know, that's the game. After this episode has gone out, there's been a whole new wave of media articles about the Prince Philip bit. I thought it was kind of done, but it's re-put it back into the news cycle, and what we get now is like a bunch of brilliant comments from angry boomers to read through. Ah, nothing better than boomers in a Facebook comment section, is there? Here we've got Rob going, he's a peacock, plain and simple. He's a punce? I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming it's homophobic. Here we have Helen. We have no comedians anymore, just people that get on stage, laugh at themselves, use foul language, and use high profile names to try and make us laugh. I mean, yeah, how, I mean, how else are we supposed to, like, what does Helen want? Like, uh, I get, okay, she doesn't want swearing, but we can't laugh at ourselves or talk about famous people. What are we supposed to do? Blackface, Helen, is that what you want? Wouldn't be surprised. And finally, Jojo White, stop punching down. It's pretty simple. Gee, I don't know, uh, I didn't know that I was above Prince Philip, you know? I mean, he is in the ground right now, so technically I am above him. But if punching Prince Philip isn't punching up a member of the royal family, I don't know what is. Like, what do these people want from me? It's good to know they think so highly of me, but fuck man, what is punching up if not a member of the royal family? And that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. Thank you very much to SBS Inside for having me on. Real great time. I told a few jokes, but I genuinely enjoyed it. It was a really cool thing to do. If you wanna watch the entire episode, the link to that is in the description. Uh, really great discussion from a lot of different guests. And uh, grab tickets to my Melbourne International Comedy Festival show, loosespears.com, straight out of Frankston. It's six nights only. We're in a big boy theater. It's gonna be incredible. And hey, I'm gonna be joking about the queen this time. So let's see if I can go two for two. We'll see. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to end this video on uh, my favourite uh, thing said by someone on the panel. It wasn't actually me, surprisingly. Uh, I want to leave it on uh, Atmal Saleh's thoughts on what could happen if cancel culture continues to go on and if we really start getting excited about the idea of limiting free speech. thing that really um, means a lot to me because we both were born in countries where Everything's restricted. If, you, if you're an entertainer, or a, there are comedians today in Egypt languishing in prisons, uh, enduring torture because of uh, a view they've had that, uh, that, that uh, is opposite to uh, the, the government sort of um, line, right? And we don't want to get to that. I think people should just be offended and accept it. Accept being offended. Don't go see that comedian. No one is forcing you to go and see someone that you personally find offensive. Free speech is not free. It comes at a price. And that is the, the price is that, you know, invariably someone's going to get offended at something. Mm. And it's okay. It's, it's allowed. In a free society, it's, it's allowed to be someone's feelings are hurt. Well, go and live in Cairo and try and have your, your opinions um, suppressed and, 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 and when the secret police comes knocking on your door and then say, which, which one do you choose? It's okay, be, be offended for a while and get over it. Very well said. Thanks for watching. I'm Lewis Spears. Like, subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit, buy my shirts, buy my merch and no one gets hurt.